the Rams in the NFC West. It's a three-way tie for the first seed in that division. The Ram- it's between the Rams, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks. They're all 6-3. and three. But after the Rams beat the Seahawks, did you think that the Rams proved that they should be favorites in the NFC West? I'll start on this one. Um, I think the Rams have certainly impressed me, and they've, uh, I, I want to say, raised my opinion of them from the start of the season. They are 100% in, in that dogfight at the top of the division, um, kind of what I thought the Niners were going to be, except they had the injury problems. So now it's a three-way race between the Rams, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks. Uh, one of the things that the Rams have done really well this year is they've shown up in big games. When, when they've played good opponents, you know, I look at that Bills game that they should have won with that pass interference call. Uh, the Seahawks, they play great against. One of the things that hurts them the most, in my opinion, the Seahawks have the easiest schedule out of the, the three teams in the NFC West the rest of the way. Their c- opponents have a combined about 38% winning percentage uh, for the Cardinals, their opponents have about a 49% winning percentage, and the Rams opponents are about a 51% winning percentage. So the Seahawks are going to have the easiest schedule the rest of the way, though they have a lot of problems to figure out defensively. And I know I sent you guys the video before we recorded this episode, Jamal Adams ducking out of a tackle, arguing with Pete Carroll on the sidelines. He has been number 78 out of 82 safeties in the league in coverage this season. And they just gave up two first round picks for him. And he was supposed to be the difference maker in that defense. So the Seahawks have problems. And I personally don't know if they're going to be able to figure them out the rest of the way. But if I had to pick out of any of those three teams to win the division, for me, it would be the Cardinals. I've been super impressed by what they've done. I think that defense has elevated itself and, More importantly, Kyler Murray has shaken off that rust that we saw at the beginning of the season. He was a little bit up and down to start the year, but he is really playing like an elite quarterback over the last few weeks. So if I had to bet on one team to win it at this point, I would say the Cardinals, who I saw as a playoff team coming into the year, but my confidence in the Seahawks has certainly faded. And I I can't say that I trust the Seahawks going forward. I, I trust the Rams more than the Seahawks, but I trust the Cardinals more than both of them. I'll go first because I know Riv has the same opinion as you in terms of picking the Cardinals to win the division. No, I don't. Because I, I feel Actually, like... Actually, let me go first. Let me go first. Let me go first. Let me go, let me go first. All right, let you can go, go first. first. Is this gonna, let me go first. Let me start off by saying that this NFC West race is going to be very, very entertaining towards the end of the year. All three teams have a chance to make it. I think all three teams can get in. I'm going to go ahead and flip my pick. I'm going to ride with the Rams. And why I'm going to ride with the Rams is because... They can get to the quarterback. You know, they have 31 sacks on the year. They're eighth, they're eighth in sacks. They can they get turnovers. Jared Goff has been playing really well. I, and I like their team because, like you said, Jack, they can fight. They're going to fight. No matter who they play, they're going to get into a fight. And I think this team with Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald on that defensive end, Cooper Cup, Jared Goff on the offense, the running game has been really, really good this year. I think this team can definitely make some noise and get some wins towards the end of the year. And I think they'll come out and be the NFC West crown. Look, I agree with you, and I say it because I'll just go over the rankings right now. The Rams have the 18th-ranked offense. The Seahawks has the, have the first-ranked offense. The Cardinals have the 7th-ranked offense. Then when we get into defense, the Cardinals have the 9th-ranked defense. So top 10 defense and offense. Seahawks are 28 defense. They were at like 31 like two weeks ago. They're at 28 now. But the Rams, they have the second-ranked defense in the NFL. And I was so surprised with what I saw yes on um, Sunday when they faced the Seahawks. The Seahawks are the number one ranked offense in the NFL, and the Rams completely shut them out. I mean, they couldn't get anything done. The pressure was on Wilson. Wilson was missing balls that he usually completes. He was getting pressured the entire game. They forced him into mistakes. And I think that's a testament to their defensive coordinator, Brandon Staley, he's done a hell of a job with that Rams defense, second ranked in the NFL. So I think they can beat the Cardinals. They, they've they already shown that they can beat the Seahawks. I was high on the Rams like into week three. I thought they came out, their offense is revamped, their defense got better. Jalen Ramsey 
knows his system. I think they're the team to watch out for. And somebody who was really good yes, on Sunday was Daryl Williams. He intercepted Russell Wilson twice. One of them was just a great play. I think he read an out route, and he just jumped it. I mean, the Rams are a team to watch for, and I think people are disrespecting them because they went 9-7 and seven last year, which isn't even a bad record. But, of course, after you make the Super Bowl and go 9-7, and seven, people start to sleep on you a little bit, and that's, what hap- that, that's, what hap- that's what's happening with the Rams right now. I want to address... Uh, one of the things you said really quickly and then raise a new point, uh, the Seahawks, they were impressive against Russell Wilson defensively, but I think the, the Rams. Russell Wilson is – he. yeah, they the were, Rams were – He said Seahawks. I, wor- I worded that wrong. I worded that wrong. The Rams were impressive against the Seahawks, but I feel like the Seahawks are running out of that Russell Wilson magic, and he's trying to do – the things that he's been doing all year and teams are just stopping those deep plays down the field. Jalen Ramsey locked up DK Metcalf on Sunday, which he's arguably the best cornerback in the league. It's not that much of a surprise, but Russell Wilson is running out of that magic and he's had to carry that team all season long. And if the offense isn't doing it, then they're not winning football games because it is all on the offense's shoulders. Uh, another point that I wanted to raise that I think is really going to hurt the Rams is Andrew Whitworth going down on Sunday. Yeah, without a doubt. Who is a key for that offensive line. And when you look at Jared Goff this season, he has a third. This was as of three weeks ago, I will say. But as of three weeks ago, he had a 38.1% completion rate under pressure, which is a drop of 29.3 from his clean pocket percentage. The only quarterbacks that were worse than that at that point in time were Aaron Rodgers, Dwayne Haskins, and Mitch Trubisky. Um, and then beyond that, Goff has a 42% completion rate under pressure since in 2019 or last year in 2019 and 43% completion rate under pressure in 2020. Every year he's been bottom five in the NFL in completion rate under pressure. So if that offensive line folds a little bit under Andrew Whitworth, which we saw against the Dolphins when they played an elite defense, even with Whitworth in the lineup, they struggled to get him that clean pocket. And when that pocket collapses, Jared Goff is a totally different quarterback. So that's a big concern for me moving forward. How is the offensive line going to shape out without Whitworth? I don't know what the injury was, I don't. I didn't see if they announced ACL. anything today, but it did not look good. So if he's done for the year, that's a huge loss for the Rams. This is. I think it was an MCL. I'm pretty sure. But this is what I have to say. Uh, you talked about Wilson and making no mistakes and making those mistakes and trying to do too much. I think, I I think that that is wrong because I don't see that he was trying to do too much. I saw that he was. He just read it wrong, and. When I watched the game, the Seahawks were playing good defense for the defense that they played. I mean, they held them to 23 points. This is a Rams offense that, you know, is capable of scoring a lot more. They held them to 23 points. They were getting stops, back-to-back possessions. In fact, the the drive that Jamal Adams forced a fumble, and also I want to say that I think Jamal Adams has been criminally underrated with the Seahawks. People are bashing him way too much. Uh, he had a forced fumble. Then the next drive, he had a sack. But when he had that forced fumble, Russell Wilson threw a pick. So the defense made a play for him, and he couldn't repay them back. And they were in field goal range. But then when you talk about the Rams' defense, the Seahawks scored three points in the second half. And you want to know when that was? That was when there were 29 seconds left in the clock, and they scored a field goal. Those three points. The Rams basically shut them out in the second half, and that's the number one. That's the number one ranked offense in the NFL. So I think the Rams deserve a lot of respect, and I can't wait to see them face the Cardinals. Yeah, I think like to your, to the end of your point, I think that Cardinals matchup is going to be interesting. You know, because the Cardinals are a top ten in both offense and defense, and I think the Jalen Ramsey versus DeAndre Hopkins is going to be interesting, like it always was when the Texans played the Jaguars. You know, so I think. That's definitely going to be very enticing. I'm interested. And I think it's really going to come down to those two teams just off the simple fact that defense is important in the NFL. And both those teams are one of the are top 10 defenses in the league. So we'll see at the end of the year. But I think I'm going to ride with the Rams. I think the Rams are going to finish out with the division. I think the Cardinals and the Seahawks get in. And, you know, it's it's just interesting because all all three of these teams that at different point points in the year looked like totally different teams 
they're all sitting at six and three right now. And it's essentially a brand new season race to the finish line. Who's going to be the best the rest of the way. Personally, I would put my chips in the Cardinals basket. I've been really impressed by them and I, I, I would go with them the rest of the way. Hey, what's up guys. You just finished watching a clip of the pick aside podcast. My name is Joel Moran. My name is Jack Bartek. My name is River Brown. And we are your hosts for this podcast. We want to thank you guys for watching the clip, like subscribe and comment and share if you would care to, because it helps us grow. And we're trying to make this a full-time thing. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting and see you next time.